Are you on mushrooms? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hate to fuck up your bus. <laughs> but I got, you got to bring it down just a little bit. You don't have to walk home. I, I could. Okay. <laughs> we all could, really. It's just, should you, I think is the case. I have a feeling you'd end up in a wheat field. <laughs> just being, am I in Candyland? <laughs> up, up, you all right? You got it, no, nope. all right. No, nope. we might need some help here. He's good, he's good. They'll just put him in back, it's fine. <laughs> I hope he doesn't walk home. That's gonna be tough. That's gonna be a tough walk. That's gonna be a real tough walk for him. <laughs> uh, oh, are they, are they friends of him? Is she a nurse? No, she's just like, I gotta go check on him. I was in Burning Man. I know how this goes. Only in Portland, right? Only in Portland. Give it up for Chris Porter! All right. I'm gonna tell some jokes. Uh, the goal is that you laugh. If a joke comes up you don't like or you don't agree with, Sit that one out. All right, I don't talk about the same shit for very long, so just fucking check Instagram, all right? When you go to a concert and a band plays a song you don't like, you go get a beer, right? You don't, you don't run up to the stage calling the bass player a dick. Also, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if you don't like the joke. I used to give a shit, and then I bought a couch. <laughs> you ever bought a couch? Like, not off Craigslist. I didn't, I didn't go buy Gary's couch and then have to let it sit in the yard and let all the Gary air out. <laughs> no, I went to a store and I picked out fabrics out of a book that was handed to me by a man named Armando. <laughs> it took him 12 weeks to make this couch. Cause they, first they had to kidnap the children, <laughs> teach them how to make a couch, have them build a couple rough draft couches. <laughs> and then they built my couch. And I gotta tell you. Mwah! They, they nailed it. You should, you should get, you should try this cat. This couch is like my ex-girlfriend. It is white. It is very comfortable, and I don't want to fuck it. I got sick a couple weeks ago. wasn't COVID. Everybody's fine. Apparently there's no more diseases anymore, right? It's all COVID now. <laughs> Have you gotten sick and it not been COVID and you just spend three days trying to fucking convince people? <laughs> I got sick, I called my sister. I go, I'm sick. She goes, is it COVID? I said, I don't have any of the symptoms. She's like, sounds like COVID. <laughs> She said, you probably got that new variant where you have all the opposite symptoms. <laughs> have you heard about the latest variant where you feel fine, but you have COVID? <laughs> and then you give it to all your friends and they feel fine. <laughs> and then your grandpa dies. <laughs> right. Of natural causes, it just, it was ill-timed. My sister's like, I'm gonna bring you some tests. Let's just be safe. I said, all right. So she brings me a couple of those at-home chemistry sets, <laughs> right? They look like one-hitters. 
I take one one day, I take one the next day, bull negative. I call her, I say, I don't have COVID. She says, you know those tests are only 40% accurate. <laughs> what? What? How'd that test get out of the factory? That's a fail. 40%? But guessing is 50%. You sent out a test that's worse than guessing? <laughs> the fuck is going on at the COVID test factory? They got some make-a-wish kid working down there? <laughs> Lil Larry's got leukemia, but man, he made that test out of his daddy's one hitter in a bubblegum strip. <laughs> we lost our minds during the pandemic, man. My cousin lost his mind. My cousin's always been an athlete his whole life. Played high school, played Division I college football, now he's a trainer. Always trusted doctors. Had six surgeries throughout his career, three of them on the same knee. At no point was he like, the fuck. <laughs> and then they told him he needed two vaccination shots, and now all of a sudden he's like, they're trying to chip me. I'm like, what? What? They would have chipped you five surgeries ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, I don't give a shit if you got the vax or you didn't get the vax. But they're not trying to chip us. They don't need to chip us. We're already chipped. <laughs> it's your phone. You fucking love your chip. You bought a case for your chip. <laughs> you make fun of poor people for having shitty chips. <laughs> Look at your cricket ass chip. <laughs> Take your chip into the bathroom with you, don't you? Now the government knows you're pooping. <laughs> and they know when and they know where. And then you gotta hold it in this hand while you clean yourself up with this hand so you don't give yourself pink eye again. Remember? That was a shit Memorial Day, wasn't it? I don't talk about politics up here, so y'all can, yeah, I just figure we can all have a good time. Uh, I don't, you know, I just don't give a shit how you voted or what, I don't, I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news in six years. Yeah. You don't have to watch it. They don't, they don't test you. Right, you can just walk around being happy. It'd be one thing if y'all just watch the news, but you don't. The news has become college football, basically. Everybody's got a team. Right? Doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, you're watching for five minutes, everybody's like, you cock-sucking motherfucker! <laughs> right? You get all mad. And then what are you gonna do? Huh? <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> you all mad at the news, what are you gonna do? Gonna get on Facebook? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Right? You're an adult. You're going to get on Facebook. You're going to share a link. <laughs> You're going to get in the comments. Fuck you. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. I love you. I'll see you at Christmas. <laughs> That's what makes me laugh about Facebook. All these idiots think they're spreading the news. And the only people that see their bullshit are friends and family. And they already know you're an asshole. <laughs> And here's the real truth. You don't have the answers. No one does. Most of you barely got out of high school. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have the answers when they fucking gave them to you. <laughs> That's all high school was. Monday through Thursday, 
these are the answers. And then Friday, now you tell us the answers. And 60% of you are like, durr, durr. I wonder if Carrie likes me, durr. <laughs> Look at all the dumb people getting mad. All right. <laughs> no! I'm not dumb, Chris. I'm just a bad test taker. <laughs> yeah. We know, bro. We know. We saw the scores. You were terrible at tests. <laughs> no! Chris, listen. I put the answers in my head, but then during the test, there's lots of pressure, and the pressure would get in my head and mess up all the answers. Let me tell you something, dumb dumb. <laughs> if high school was too much pressure for you, adult life gonna be a rough ride. <laughs> Cause every day of adulthood involves something way more pressure filled than any high school test ever was. Merging onto an interstate. <laughs> right? The line at a Chick-fil-A. You go to a Buffalo Wild Wings and play trivia on the screen. That's a test. You ever seen someone lose their shit because of all the pressure out of B-dubs? <laughs> ah! ah! The answers keep disappearing. <laughs> Leave Gary alone now. He's just a bad test taker. He just worked up. He's, just, he's had too many Trulies. He's get. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he gets those black cherries in him, man. He gets fucked up. Those dark seltzers change people. I give a little bit of a shit, all right? I give a little, like if you, I'll still protest. If you feel your rights have been infringed upon, if you feel oppressed, give me a time and an intersection, I'll march with you. But I'm done boycotting shit. I'm done giving up products or services because someone gets mad at a company. Because it doesn't work. We do it for like a week and then we realize we have bigger shit to worry about. Like remember Uber fucked up? Like six years ago, Uber charged a surge in Manhattan during an emergency and all the celebs got on Twitter. Fuck Uber, delete Uber. So I deleted Uber. And then a week later, I was drunk outside of a bar. Like, why don't I have Uber? This goddamn phone keeps deleting apps. Last October, people wanted me to cancel my Amazon Prime subscription because someone thought Jeff Bezos didn't pay his warehouse employees enough. How's that my problem? No one boycotted comedy when I was getting paid dick. Right? And it's October, you want me to cancel Prime right before the holidays? Are you out of your mind? What do you expect me to do? Go to a store like a poor person? I have a debit card. Shit comes to me, Holmes. Do you know how great Amazon Prime is? I don't know how much it costs. That's how great it is. They charge me every year. I, I get the bill, I go, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But if you asked me right now how much is Amazon Prime, I'd look you dead in the face and go, I don't know, man, just get it. It's the best. You pay the fee, you get music, you get movies, and then you order shit. All you pay for is the shit. Shit's there in two days. Sometimes it shows up early. 
You ever expected something in two days and it showed up in one? You've never been more excited in your goddamn life. You open the door like the Brita filters are here. I know, tomorrow. I'm holding, bro. Fucking look at me. Call Doc Brown. We're going back in time. Now they offer same day. First time Amazon offered me same day delivery, I was like, go home, Amazon, you're drunk. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. You're not getting that shit here today. They were like, press the fucking button, Porter. Seven hours later, knock at my door. Suck it, bitch. I'm like, what? <laughs> Last summer, people wanted me to stop eating at Jimmy John's, which is a sandwich chain, because the owner of Jimmy John's, Jimmy John, <laughs> may or may not have had sex with a shark. What do you mean, what? Did I speak Mandarin in the middle of that sentence? I'm gonna say it again, but fucking focus. Jimmy John. James Jonathan. May, mm-hmm, or may not, mm-mm, have had sex with a shark. There is an image on the internet of a man that looks very much like Jimmy John laying naked on a shark. Is he fucking it? I'm not a marine biologist. <laughs> but I've seen the photo, and I can tell you this, he's not not fucking it. <laughs> right, like if you were looking, if you saw the photo and looked at your friend, you couldn't be like, he's not fucking this shark. Cause he might be, all right? <laughs> I don't know where a shark's vagina and or butthole are. But if you ask me to ballpark it on my very limited shark knowledge, I'd say homeboy in the photo is on the wrong side. Right? Cause he's on top. He's like, he's dorsal side. And I don't know why, I just figure you need to be dorsal opposite. But again, fuck I know about sharks, right? I'm from Kansas. Now, for the record, I do not know if it's Jimmy John in the photo or not. I've never met the man. But let's say, for the sake of argument, that it is Jimmy John in the photo. You're probably wondering to yourself how a man gets to such a place. You know, shark fucking. <laughs> Well, there's a little tidbit of info that I don't think a lot of you have about Jimmy John, and I think it's very relevant to this story. Jimmy John is personally worth over $1.7 billion. Yes, America likes mayonnaise. <laughs> now, I've led a pretty fortunate life. I've got to hang out with some billionaires, a bunch of rich people. And I've noticed this about rich people. They're fucking bored. <laughs> All of them. They're just, because you have to realize what it's like to have that kind of money. You don't have to work if you don't want to. Your money makes a shit ton of money. You don't really buy anything anymore because you already went out and bought all the shit you ever wanted. And then one year you went out and did all the shit you ever wanted to do. 
Why do you think every billionaire you've ever heard of is trying to go to space? <laughs> it's because they ran out of shit to do on Earth. <laughs> Billionaires are like Earth. Check. <laughs> Would I fuck a shark? The man you see before you this evening telling jokes in some weird hipster town? <laughs> I fucking, I like you guys, but lunch was tough. Lunch was tough. Lunch was tough. I don't know what, I've never seen that. I think they just got some twigs out of the yard and threw it in there. Point being, would I fuck a shark, the man you see before you this evening? No, I wouldn't. Because I still have hopes and dreams. But you have to look at things from other people's point of view. Imagine right now that you already have all the things you've ever wanted and you've already done all the things you've ever wanted to do. Now you're just chilling on your boat. You just caught a shark. <laughs> now you're just trying to figure out how you're gonna kill the rest of your evening. That's when one of your sea lackeys comes back, like, hey man, you wanna fuck this shark? You can go first. Again, the man you see before you this evening, no, I don't wanna fuck a shark. But if I had $1.7 billion to my name, pour some margaritas. Let's see where this shit goes. I'm not saying I'm gonna. I'm not saying I'm not gonna. But also, I'm probably gonna, right? <laughs> hey, Porter, did you fuck that shark? You're goddamn right I did. Why? I hadn't. Check. Time to go to space. <laughs> hey, Porter, how rich are you? I'm shark fucking rich. That's how rich I am. You know how you watch Jaws, you get scared? I watch Jaws and I jerk off. That's, that's where I'm at financially. 43 years old, for those of you uh, keeping score. Thank you. I'm um, single. Yeah, that's a proper response. That's fair. That's fair. I said I was 43. You're like, hey, you look good. And I said I was single. You're like, ah, okay. Let me tell you something about being single in your 40s. You need to come to terms with the fact that it's probably you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No one's that unlucky, Holmes. You made choices, and those choices led you here. Uh, perhaps you chose to focus on your career. Perhaps you were in a bad relationship for a long time, and you finally chose to find your way out of it. Perhaps you chose to refer to your cats as your children. Is that one too close to home? Okay, fucking shots fired in Portland. All right. <laughs> you leave candy and razzle out of this. Uh, I, <laughs> I know what my problem is. I don't compromise real well, uh, especially what I'm looking for in a partner. I just, I know what I'm looking for in a woman. I found it twice. They were both like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Heartbreak's a motherfucker, man. You gotta laugh about it. I'm from Kansas. You don't laugh about heartbreak. You end up outside of Chili screaming a woman's name. <laughs> She's just trying to manage the place. I'd just rather be alone than be with someone where the whole time you're looking at them like, fucking seriously? 
I had a girlfriend for a while. She loved me. She supported me in everything I did. And I left her because she was annoying. <laughs> and I didn't like her. <laughs> She's not here. Fuck you. Oh, you. You don't know her. <laughs> I feel like there are couples in the room that are like, we can do that. I didn't know we could do that. I thought this was a phase that lasted forever. <laughs> and I know there are women in the room staring daggers at me too. I know you're looking at me like, well, I bet you're fucking happy now. <laughs> Look at you, all alone in your 40s. Guess you should have compromised, huh? I bet you think about her all the time when you're laying alone in your cold bed, wishing she was around in your bed. That is cold. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. I lay in my bed and I laugh and I laugh and I laugh. And then I go, listen to that. Listen to that. It's no one bitching about how cold it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind being alone. It's tough for some people. I'm used to it. I've been alone my whole life. Even as a kid, I was alone. Like, I have parents, but they, they had shit to do. <laughs> I grew up in a rural school district in Kansas. So seventh, eighth grade, I had to be up at 6 a.m. to catch the bus, because it would take a full hour to get to the school. My parents didn't have to be up that early. <laughs> So they weren't. <laughs> My mom told me straight, she's like, you are 12 years old. You can pour a bowl of cereal. I don't need to be here for this. <laughs> and I know there are parents in the room like, I do everything for my children. And my mom would have looked at you and said, fucking get a job. <laughs> my parents loved me and supported me until Friday night, and then they had plans, and then they hired someone to love and support me. And that's how it should be. Those of you here tonight with your kids at home are doing it right. Yes. You shouldn't be around your kids all the time. That's how you make them weird. Like, you people that do travel sports with your kids all summer are out of your fucking minds. <laughs> My mom would have never done that shit. My mom would have told me to fuck off, son. <laughs> mom, I want to join a baseball team. Sounds great. Uh, it's $3,000. <laughs> fuck off, son. What are you talking about? Why is a baseball team three grand? Well, every weekend of the summer, we travel to another town and we play in a tournament that lasts all weekend. Do they fly you to these places? <laughs> no, ma'am, you get to drive us. <laughs> Back the fuck up, son. <laughs> Did you just say I get to? Are you trying to pitch this like it's a reward? <laughs> so what you're saying to your father and I, is that after we both put in 50 hours a week to put a roof over your head, our reward <laughs> is that we get, fuck off, son. No, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I have friends and they were here before you. Don't you want me to make the major, son? If you're good enough, they'll find you. <laughs> and I know there's travel sports parents here. I know your butt hurt. <laughs> I know you're like, Chris, you don't know. You don't know, Chris, you don't know. But I do know. Cause you and I stay in the same hotels. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, we do. Every Hilton Garden Inn, every Courtyard Marriott, I'm there. And you'll never see me. I avoid you at all costs. There is no worse start to a weekend for me than pulling up to a hotel and seeing nine Toyota Siennas. With that white shoe polish riding in the rear windshield, I pull up like fuck Hunter, fuck Tyler, and fuck the Wildcats. Cause y'all take over the whole hotel like there's nobody else there. And you deadbolt all your doors open so you can go running in and out of everybody's room. So all fucking night, all I hear is ka 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 Right? Maybe the beginning of the summer you're having a good time, but by late July you're done. And it's written all over your goddamn face. I can see it as soon as you walk in the lobby. I know that you know that you just drove seven hours to watch your kid bat 220. <laughs> this motherfucker ain't gonna make it. Could have gone to the lake. <laughs> the best is when I come home late at night. Like a night like tonight, I got two shows. Probably go have a drink afterwards. Get back to the hotel about 1 a.m. If there was a travel sports team in my hotel, sure as shit when I walked in the door at 1 a.m., there'd just be a group of dads just sitting in the lobby, just drenched in Under Armour. Right? They all look like they've been to war. They're just holding on to their Michelob Ultra for dear life. Just... They don't even talk. They just sit there quietly because the moms and the kids have finally gone to bed. And for the first time all day, they just listen to no one asking them to do shit. They're... I played Little League. I played go to a community park, play seven innings, get a Capri Sun, go the fuck home. Little League. But I grew up out in the sticks. So but as we got older, the games would get further away. So seventh, eighth grade, we had games like an hour away. I'll never forget eighth grade year, we had a game in Wellsville, Kansas. Wellsville was an hour from where I grew up. Eighth grade, not a good year for me. I was a late bloomer, all right? I didn't play a lot eighth grade year. I just sat on the bench waiting for the pube train to show up. <laughs> Right, you remember eighth grade? One kid looked like a kid, and then the next kid could buy beer without an ID. Remember that? <laughs> I was the former. <laughs> Update. They came in, all right? <laughs> I got a shit ton of pubes now. Not as many as I used to. I trim them so girls would go down on me and stuff. I don't do a great job. I just clear a path, really. Yeah. Looks like someone used the weed whacker, right? And then they didn't mow. You know what I'm saying? Like it's short near the trunk. A lot of times, girls take my pants off. They're like, you, this. <laughs> you didn't finish. This isn't done. I'm like, there's a path. Get in there. It's like going on a hike with your face. 
All right, you just stay on the path, that's all. Don't get lost in the bramble, there's snakes in the bramble. Fucking people die in the bramble. But eighth grade, weep, nothing. I didn't have shit to add. You could have eaten off my crotch in the eighth grade. It'd have been salty, you could have done it. Right, like a salmon. You know what I'm talking about, like a salt rock kind of effect. This is Portland, you get it. I didn't play a lot of eighth grade years when I'm getting that. I knew it, mom knew it, America knew it. I came downstairs in my uniform. I go, mom, we gotta go, we gotta get to Willsville. She's like, yeah, I don't think you're gonna make it. I said, mom, it's a game, I gotta be there. She said, but also, will they miss you? I said, fuck. Why are we being a dick on a Saturday, man? She said, honey, I love you, I do, but I had to travel a lot for work this week and I'm just exhausted and I don't have it in me to drive two hours round trip to sit there and watch you sit there. <laughs> she said, I don't mind doing it. I'm just saying, why are we burning half a tank of gas for something we could do in the yard? <laughs> I'll sit here, you sit there, I'll cheer you on. <laughs> I'll put you in, fucking get in there. <laughs> Steal second, it's all make believe, you win. Uh, I've been trying to date women closer to my age, uh, which is a new thing. I used to date younger women a lot, not on purpose, they're just aggressive. <laughs> younger women like older dudes, sucked when I was younger, but it's fucking fun now. I'm having a good time with it. Getting a lot of revenge for 30 year old Chris. It's not a sex thing though. That's not why I dated younger women. That would be counterintuitive. Women in their early 40s have the sex drive of a fucking 18-year-old man. <laughs> she getting fingered right now. Look around the room, you see a woman in her early 40s and a man of the same age sitting next to her. That man is holding on for dear life. <laughs> that man is looking for as much vitamin E as he can find. <laughs> that man does not swallow Viagra, he has to crush it up and snort it. He has no time. <laughs> She's like, get over here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to boof it. Young kids, explain to the older folk what boofing is, thanks. Uh, it's where you put a pill up your butthole. Okay, I'll explain it. Jokes are funnier when you explain them. That's comedy 101. I'm sure some of you are even wondering why would someone put a pill up their butthole? And uh, well, first you have to be sad. And uh, But according to my boofing friends, uh, or friends that boof, I don't know how to, I don't know what the proper term is, but uh, apparently the glands in your rectum are much more receptive to such things, so the pill is ingested faster, and it, and it bypasses your liver, but making it hit harder, which seems safe, right? <laughs> Goddamn liver always keeping us down. I'm removing toxins from things I ingest. You piece of shit! <laughs> I've never boofed. I, uh, I've never had a headache quite that bad where <laughs> you're looking down at the Advil like, I don't have 20 minutes. We gotta... I'm gonna have to SWAT team this in here. We're coming in the back! The reason I dated younger women is because women in their early 30s are more available to the idea 
of getting into a relationship just to see what happens. <laughs> and if it works out, great. If it doesn't, lessons learned. But a woman in her early 40s, according to my research, has fucking no time for that bullshit. <laughs> You ever been on a date with a woman in her 40s? It's not a date, it's a job interview. There's a lot of financials discussed. Where do you see yourself in five years? How do you expect to get there? How would I fit in this situation? What's your FICO score? Do you rent, do you own, do you have a savings account? Do you have medical insurance? How big's your dick? Like what? You heard me, how big is it? I don't know, the fuck you don't know? When you put it in, is she like, oh my God? Or is she like, is it in? I need to know. <laughs> Not that dating women in their 30s is perfect, right? There's problems. You get tired of explaining the OJ thing. <laughs> that happened, that's a true story. I was dating a woman in her early 30s. We were watching the OJ Simpson documentary. We were three one-hour episodes into it when she turned and looked at me and said, so this really happened? <laughs> it's a fucking document. I can't. I can't. We broke up during the fourth episode. Because if we didn't, there was going to be another dead white bitch. You know what I'm saying? I was going to kill her. I was going to kill her for being stupid. Single women my age seem to have a lot of rules or criteria to date them, which I think is really funny, uh, seeing as we're all on the clearance rack. <laughs> Like, babe, we're in our 40s. We're, we're scratching dent. So lower the price and move some product. Why don't you? Maybe lower the height requirement. Girl in LA told me she only dates men if they're in therapy. I was like, some of us are happy. Sorry, Sorry shit's not working out for you, but I'm having a good time over here. This is my job. I'm at work right now. First thing they asked me when I walked in a little late was, do you need a beer? So yeah, my parents did not get it. They're my best friends. My sister's crazy, but she's cool as shit. Uh, fucking, what else? I got a great friend group. Uh, check my porn history, crystal clear. It's all threesomes. Yeah, the good ones, not the devil ones. All right, I wanna be outnumbered, keep my head on a swivel. I don't have a lot of dreams left, but one of them is to be the base of a triangle. <laughs> right? I just, I want to support two women, just one of them with my face. <laughs> this is America, goddammit. Man can dream. <laughs> I'm not a weird guy. I have two dark secrets. They're not even dark, they're fucking, they're evening secrets. They're... I'm gonna tell them to you right now. First evening secret, when it gets real cold outside, like 20s, early, low 30s, I like when a girl's hands get real cold, she shoves them down my pants, cups my balls. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. It's real, it's not even a sex thing, it just feels amazing. It's like your balls bit into a peppermint patty. You're just, you're just like, I'm on a mountain! <laughs> Try it, December, just sussing! <laughs> Second evening secret. I don't eat vegetables. <laughs> and, that, and that statement is very polarizing. It's very, it depends on where I go. 
Like, I tell that, I say that in Portland. Most of you are like, the fuck is wrong with you? How do you sustain life? And then I go to the Midwest and they're like, yeah, that's how you eat. What are you talking about? Our food eats the vegetables. That's, that's how I get my vegetables. I feed them to the things I eat. I want to eat vegetables too. I understand how weird it is. I see the disappointment in women's faces. When I seem to be a pretty successful man, I take him to a nice restaurant and I'm funny and I'm charismatic and then it comes time to order and I'm just like, can you just, can you, all the, can you just make all the vegetables fries and I don't need a salad and um, sure, yeah, no, the kids menu's fine. That's fine, I'll just order from this. I want to eat all the vegetables, but there's something wrong with my face. Okay, because I put the veggies in and I bite down and it's like, ah, ta, 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 ta. right? I don't know what happened. Was I raped with celery as a kid? I don't know. That's, that's not a box I want to open at 43. Single women my age come in two categories. They either have a career and a plan or they have three jobs and a dream catcher. <laughs> Man, you guys don't like jokes about yourselves, do you? <laughs> Fuck it. You guys are like, other people only, you piece of shit. I didn't go out to look inward, asshole. I don't need you making fun of my tattoo, okay? I'm 116 Choctaw. And you don't know, you think you're dating the good one and then you finally get in her car and there's the dream catcher hanging from the rear view. And you're just like, fuck. I'm about to meet five cats. We're gonna need to stop and get some Claritin. This is gonna be a sneezy rendezvous. Mother! Mother! Did you finish? No, that is not what that is. Uh, stopped arguing with women about dumb shit, which is a new thing. I recommend it to the gentleman in the room. Sometimes you can just say you're right, honey, and fucking watch the game. <laughs> Listen, I can't speak for men. I've never dated a man. But I can tell you that women, not all women, some women like to dangle an argument in front of you. Like you're a puppy and it's a treat. <laughs> but this treat ruins the evening. <laughs> huh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you still love me if I got fat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gentlemen, you need to recognize this situation for what it is. It's not a woman looking to hold a conversation. That is a woman holding a gun. You cannot deflect a gun. This isn't the Matrix. You have to distract and disarm. That's what you do. Would you love me if I got fat? Fuck yeah, I would. You want to get fat right now? Let's just order four pizzas and eat and fuck and eat and fuck till we're just having greasy fucking fat sex. Just weep, weep. Weep, weep. She won't know what the fuck to do. She better... uh, I, lo I love you. I love you. <laughs> Women these days seem to have a lot of accessories for their faces. Right? Just shit that's not there normally. I'm not talking about makeup either. Y'all gone three dimensional. Look, ladies, if you do all this shit to your face because it makes you feel pretty, 
or if it gives you confidence, do whatever you need to do. But if you do it because you think men notice or give a shit, you're wasting valuable time and money. Because no man ever has been like, oh, I was totally going to fuck that chick, but she had super thin eyelashes. <laughs> you know me, bro. I like a real bushy lash. You remember porn in the 70s? I want that up here. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for a real Earth Mama muff lash. I want a lash I can hold on to while we're fucking. You know what I'm saying? Shut your ass, bitch. All right. <laughs> Some girls like it rough, man. It's fun. But that first night, you got to keep checking in. Yeah, take it. Take it. Yeah, take We're still having a good time, right? Everybody's having fun. All right. <laughs> Shut up. Sucks being single in your 40s. I don't recommend it. You get drunk, you offer women weird shit in the hopes of love. I offered a woman a baby the other night. Via text? Yeah, it's going real well. A girl I used to date off and on, we've been off for some time. She called me out of the blue. She was thinking about having a child on her own, which is very courageous. She was calling to pull my interest in supplying half a said baby. <laughs> I'm from Kansas originally, we've discussed that, but I've lived in Los Angeles for 17 years. I've been around LA babies for the last decade and a half. They're very entitled, they're very pretentious, they don't say Mr. or Mrs. or please or thank you, and you kind of want to kick them for distance. <laughs> Then I was in Memphis visiting one of my best friends who has two boys who are very well raised. They call me Mr. Chris, and it's please this, thank you that. They're like two Norman Rockwell paintings just running around. <laughs> so I got a little drunk, and I was like, fucking, I want a Memphis baby. <laughs> right? I wasn't real drunk. You know where I was at. Like, I shouldn't drive, but... I could. <laughs> right? I wouldn't. Like, if you said, Chris, can you drive? I'd say no. But if you're like, it's an emergency, I'd be like, fucking saddle up. We got this. <laughs> so I text her. I go, hey, R-E, our conversation the other night. <laughs> Means regarding. All right. <laughs> I said, hey. R.E. our conversation the other night. If you want to have a Memphis baby, I'm down to have a Memphis baby. She says, I don't know what the fuck a Memphis baby is. <laughs> I said, that's fair. I said, if you want to have a child, you want to raise it right. To have honor, class, discipline, and respect, I'm down. And then she replied, send me a picture of you as a baby. I want to see if we'd make a cute baby. <laughs> yeah, I never said she was a good person. <laughs> now, I've been cute two periods of my lifetime. 1978 to 1992, I was very cute. 2014 to present, also cute. Just let me have that one, all right? Let's just say that's how it is from a confidence. Now, 92 to 14, dark times. Dark times, a lot of phases. At one point, I had long bleach blonde hair on top and short brown hair on the bottom. And I would only wear clothing if it was produced by Eddie Bauer. Yes, no, I fucking looked like I played in a ska band that only performed in the woods. We'd have been called Tree 11. That's a dumb joke. That's a dumb joke. But 78 to 81, 
That's as cute as I ever was. That was prime, Chris Porter. You'd have fucked the shit out of me, 78 to 81. Right? You'd have been arrested immediately. But no one would have blamed you. You know what I'm saying? They're like, I'm not into babies, but if I am, that's where I'm starting. No, you can't be offended if I'm the baby being fucked. Those are the rules. Right? Who's the victim? Me. Who wrote the joke? Also me. High five. Yeah. You can't feel bad for me to me. That's... So I sent her three photos from super fuckable Chris Porter times. She texts back, she says, I don't think these are cute enough. Right? I'm like, bitch. That's not a term I use towards women lightly. But A, she was lying. And B, she was lying just to hurt me. Let me tell you something, Portland. If you lie just to hurt someone, that's evil. If you're gonna lie, if you have to lie, you lie to help people, right? You're not fat, you're not stupid. I don't even know that chick. Lies that help people. <laughs> oh, some of you have been hurt, okay. Uh, She goes, you're right, Chris, I was lying. We'd make a very cute baby. As a matter of fact, our baby's so cute, it'd probably get kidnapped for ransom and I'd be devastated. And she even reiterated the word devastated. I was like, it's not the 1930s. We're not the Lindberghs. People don't kidnap babies for ransom anymore. They don't. If a child gets kidnapped in today's society, it's either by a family member or by someone close to the family. No one's just clipping a rando baby trying to make a couple bucks because there's no money in babies there's two there's so many babies they've lost all value you can get a baby on the internet for 12 grand it's not from here but i'll send you links anyway she said chris the more i've been thinking about doing this the more i'm thinking if i'm going to do this in this manner it should be with someone i've never dated because then the father and I's relationship would be solely based around raising the child. I said, you know what? That's probably a better idea. Have fun with your ugly ass baby. <laughs> right? It's what I said to her. She's one of those people that can laugh at jokes about herself. I know that's not your thing, but she could do it. <laughs> but then I started thinking about it, and I texted her. I said, hey, listen, I'm not counting on this happening. I'm not even planning on this happening. I'm just saying food for thought. What happens if you and I get back together and we end up having this perfect baby? But meanwhile, you've already had this ugly ass baby. <laughs> and we're good people. We're good parents. We're going to treat your ugly ass baby just like our perfect baby. <laughs> but it's got eyes. It's got a mirror. It's going to know. It's gonna fucking know. And then it's gonna be sad. And now I gotta send it to therapy. And now I got an expensive, ugly ass baby. She said, how drunk are you? I said, I could drive. All right, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. This is the fifth special I've ever taped and not, this was the first one where we're like, hey, we gotta get the mushroom guy out of here. <laughs> like, we're no, we're happy he's having fun, but fucking, he's, he's fucking up the timing. <laughs> and as soon as he, I, cause I, we've all been there, right? You're like, oh, it's, oh, fuck, it's kicking in, son of a bitch. Yeah. 
Start the music. Start the music. <laughs> Swear to God, if fish doesn't start soon, I'm going to freak out. What if I would have come out like that? <laughs> right? What if... I would have loved to have seen the reviews of that special. Like, <laughs> oh, we got new people coming up. Come on up. Just come on in. Fill the seats. Uh, are you on any hallucinogens of any kind? Just. Don't drink that beer. Whatever you do, don't drink that beer. He's like, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take this. Oh, shit on a cracker. All right. Wasn't that fantastic, folks? If you want to see more of that great content, stay tuned to Helium Comedy Studios' YouTube channel. <laughs> I gotta go take a shower.